Okay, let's talk about motors. Here's a nice little motor. Uh, it's a, uh, a planetary gear reduction. I think it's planetary gears. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a good gear reduction motor. And uh, I have 12 volts going in, and it's uh, about, uh, about one per second. 60 revolutions per minute, 60 RPM. Uh, let's turn that off. So this is a, uh, this is a pretty expensive motor. Um, there's a company in Switzerland called uh, Maxon Motor. Ma this is a Maxon DC motor. They make all kinds of motors, uh, but they're like super precise, super super good quality, good bearings and everything. Um, I got really interested in, in these when I did research. I was going to build a Mars rover when the uh, uh, Sojourner uh, landed on Mars the first time. It was a cute little robot, about the right size to build in your garage. And I thought, oh, I'll build one of those. And I looked into figuring out what type of motors it used. And it, uses Ma it used Maxon motors. And... Uh, you know, it was about the size of a kid's uh, toy wagon, <laughs> like one of those little red wagons the kids have. Uh, it was, so it was a quite small one. The, the ones that are now, they're, they're, they're like a, a Toyota, right? <laughs> they're big. Um, but uh, they did use Maxon motors in those original ones. I don't know what they use now, but uh, uh, I collect, I collect, the, I, I used to, I should say. I used to collect Maxon motors on the used market whenever I could and, and pick them up cheap because I knew what they were. And so this is one. So anyway, I just wanted a motor, and uh, we'll talk about how do you drive a DC motor. Okay, we talked about uh, stepper motors, but what about DC motors? And we're going to use something called a uh, H bridge. So this video is about H bridges. So let's uh, let's bring out some paper, and we'll discuss those. All right. So you have a motor. It's got windings inside, and. Uh, there's a plus and a minus, and it, if you hook it up plus and minus, it goes one way, and you hook it up the opposite way, it goes the other way, right? So clockwise is plus over here, and counterclockwise it's plus over on this side. And so if you just want to drive a motor, you can just have a simple transistor to ground. Um, let's just put one in here. We'll say, okay, there we go. Uh, and the other one goes, goes fine. But what if you want to be able to reverse them, okay? So sometimes this wants to be negative, and sometimes this wants to be positive. So we actually need, you actually need two transistors, one, one, one to plus and one to minus, okay? And then over here, you need the same thing. One to plus and then one to minus. So uh, how do you turn these transistors on? Well, you turn them on in pairs. So if you turn these two on, then you have plus minus. And if you turn these two on, then you have plus minus. And this kind of forms the shape of an H. Okay? Oops, H. So it's an H bridge, right? H bridge. Uh, so uh, you can build your own. That's fine. Uh, but you can get cool little ICs that do it for you. So uh, I'm going to be talking about this chip here. Uh, I found them on the used market, and they were they were quite inexpensive. So I thought, okay, they'll do all the work for me. So I'll just uh, I'll just get some of these. Um, and this is a TA8080. Cool, huh? So uh, 8080. Got to have that on the MSI channel. Got to use the Toshiba 8080. So not to be confused with the Intel 8080. Okay, let's look at the data sheet. All right, so uh, uh, Toshiba, uh, oh, motor driver, so one amp, so it can, it can uh, source and sync one amp. Uh, one amp motor driver, uh, TTL compatible, can be, can, can be controlled directly from the CPU, da, 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 bi-directional, blah, 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 blah. And it can run up to 16 volts, so anywhere between 6 and 16 volts. So we can run this at 12 volts just fine. And uh, this is what it looks like with all those pins, right? It's a, it's a, it's a funny package. It's got uh, seven pins, seven pin package. Um, so here's the H bridge. All right. And you have, uh, the positive, uh, coming from here and you got the negative coming from here ground. And then the motor goes across these two. Okay. So it's not exactly an H shape here, but it is an H. Um, so the motor goes, goes, it goes there. Um, it does have some short circuit protection, so it won't melt down if things get shorted out in the motor. And it has some reverse polarity protection, too. If you hook up VCC wrong, there's a diode here that says, oops, nope, don't do that. Um, so how does this little thing work? Well, it's got, um, it's, it's got these two inputs, okay? 
And these are TTL level or, or CMOS level. You just uh, uh, fiddle these two and then you can connect this. So if you, if you energize one of them, it goes forward. And if you energize the other one, it goes reverse. And it does a little bit more than that. Well, let's look at the truth table. Okay. Uh, so the truth table looks like this, right? So if, uh, if they're both high, then it energizes both of them at the same time and it puts it into a kind of a lock mode, right? It's not going to go, it's not going to go anywhere, uh, but it's, it's, it's held with electricity. So it's kind of firm. If you go low high, then it's going to go, uh, plus minus. And then if you go high low, it's going to go minus plus. And then if you go low, low, it says high impedance. It just turns that bridge off so the motor can spin freely. Um, and so it's really, really easy to hook up. And it's even easier than that. Uh, let me show you the simplified. Yeah. So here is the schematic. And so the H bridge is a little fancier than just the way I drew it. So it has short circuit uh, protection and a bunch of other things in there. So it's, 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 it's more clever than just, than just the way I drew it. Um, it has some uh, thermal shutdown. So if it gets too hot, if it's over voltaged, it will shut down. If it's short circuited, it will shut down. So it's got all this cool protection in it, right? It's great. And then it's got this control logic and the control logic operates. So I told you it was TTL level. Well, it's actually just, it's like, uh, it's not, I don't know what you call it. It's open emitter. Um, it's open and, and it requires a pull down. Okay. And so if you don't pull down, it's a high state. And if you pull down, it's a low state. And it's just, it's just a pull down to ground. So it would work with CMOS logic or TTL logic or just switches, right? So we'll just do it with switches. We'll just use switches here. And uh, when we push on one, it should go one way. We'll push on the other one, it should go on the other way. Um, and pin six is not used, all right? So I don't know why they didn't make it a six pin package, but they made it a seven pin package. So let's hook this thing up and uh, get it to spin. All right, so I have the uh, chip here. Uh, I've got 12 volts coming in and I've got the uh, motor connected to these two leads, okay? And so uh, here is the motor. I'll put it right here so we can see it. All right, and then uh, this wire is connected to the ground. So if we ground pin one, it should rotate in one direction. And it's going clockwise, and if I ground pin two, it goes counterclockwise. There you go. So it's very simple. So this would be easy to hook up to a microprocessor. Forwards and backwards. Now, the one thing that's uh, uh, failing is that you don't know where it is. You could kind of count how long you have it on, but most of the time then you rely on having some other way of knowing where you are. You have some switches so you can run it and then it, it, it runs into a switch and you stop. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's kind of a go, no go. There's no speed control, although you can't do speed control. You can uh, pulse modulate, right? So we can go, I can, I can try to pulse modulate my finger. Let's, let's, let's see if we can hook up a, uh, let's see if we can hook up a 555. Yeah, let's see if we can hook up a 555 and make it go slower. So I've hooked up a little 555 and uh, right now I'm running the motor at full speed. So that's what full speed looks like about once every second. And then let's hook it up to the 555. And you can see that's running much slower because we're pulsing, pulsing that pin. And let's see if we can't get it to go even slower if we modify the, uh, if we modify the 555, uh, 555 clock speed. Okay, uh, I gave you an introduction to this strange part and there's a bunch of uh, H-bridge parts that you can get. This is one of the oldest ones around, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them now and uh, you hook them up into an H.